Hi, my name's Richard Payne. I'm an artist working just outside of Melbourne in a small village called Dalesford in Australia. I started my life as an architectural illustrator and draftsman and studied art all my life. Early in the piece, I needed to make a living and life dealt me a whole lot of different journeys, one of them being my own graphic design and corporate communications company. As I studied, I started to realise that there was something missing in my art and I thought it was my technical facility, so I moved to Florence in Italy and studied at the Florence Academy of Art. While I was there, they asked me to conduct master classes on perspective and art techniques, and I did that in Europe and the United States, as well as at Melbourne University later on, which is something that I still continue to do and enjoy. T.S. Eliot, back in 1930, wrote on art, it is not merely in the use of the imagery of a common life, not merely in the use of imagery of the sordid life of a great metropolis, but in the elevation of such imagery to the first intensity, presenting it as it is, and yet representing something much, much more than itself. What Eliot was saying is that art is actually a gateway to the transcendental. And what I'd like to discuss with you today is First of all, the fusion of the ascetic and the spiritual in art. What happened to open me in my art practice and how I now connect with spirit when I'm creating a work of art. So back in about 1770, Joshua Reynolds, who was the president of the British Academy of Art at the time, wrote about a hierarchy or a ranking of art. He didn't see all art as being equal. On his first level, he had still life, then there was animal painting, then landscape and cityscapes, then genre painting, portraiture, and right on the top level of art, he placed historic painting, which was paintings of a historic significance, and religious painting and mythological painting. When you look really carefully at his hierarchy, what you realise is that it's a, from bottom to the top, it's really an, a journey from being focused on just the physical aspects of painting to being focused on, yes, still the physical and the aesthetic aspects, but also with the addition of the spiritual and, and energy. And as we move up his hierarchy, you need to add much more spirit and energy into the piece to have a successful painting. So as artists, we first strive to come to grips with the, the physical technicalities of doing a painting. And then eventually we start to realise that there's more to that and there's a spiritual element to it as well. A great example of that is St. Teresa's ecstasy, the ecstasy of St. Teresa. It was a, she was a nun who had a spiritual experience of an angel coming to her and thrusting a flaming arrow into her full of the divine love of God. And she had that spiritual experience around God. Now, it's impossible for St. Teresa to share that emotion and that energy with us directly. You know, one human being can't do that for another human being. But what she couldn't, can do, is, she, as she did, she can write it down in a description and we can read her description of that event. What's really important to mention here is that there's a big difference between having the experience, spiritual, emotional, and being able to communicate that experience to somebody else. Even if God sent an angel down to us and put a, an arrow through our heart, we would have our own divine experience, not St. Teresa's. But in 1650, Lorenzo Benini actually created a sculpture of the ecstasy of St. Teresa. And once again, what we read is his sculpture of the event, not Benini's personal emotional state when he created the work. His personal emotional state and his spiritual state and his spiritual understanding definitely informs the work and 
the spiritual experience can be a catalyst for creativity. And for, he was so connected to that event that he actually shows us that event in a way that we might not have seen ourselves. And his sculpture opens a gateway to the transcendental for us to have our own experience. For me, where it all started, this fusion of the aesthetic and the spiritual started in still life. Way, way back at the beginning, I was focused on purely the physical and technical attributes of making an apple look like an apple. So I was focused on drawing and painting, colour theory, composition, perspective, all of those elements. And as my work started to develop, I started to realise that when I looked at the master's paintings of an apple, it had something that my work didn't have. So I studied even harder, but I was totally immersed in the physical world. So the elements I looked at were the colour of an apple, the shape of an apple, the texture of an apple, the, the blush on the skin of the apple, and still there's something missing in my work. Eventually I realised that what it was, was what makes an apple an apple, is it's all, it's all of those things, but it's also the smell and the taste and the crispness of an apple that makes an apple an apple. So I began to hold in my mind those more spiritual, energetic um, sides to an apple, the smell, the taste, the feel, the juice drunk running down your mouth as I was painting the, the apple. And my work moved up to a higher level. If I was drawing a tree, what I would do is sit and contemplate the tree for quite some time. And eventually, just when it felt right, I would ask the tree, who are you? What's it feel like to be a tree? What's the thing that you're most proud of when you're being a tree? And then I would draw that. If I asked the tree those questions and it didn't answer me, I'd just sit and contemplate for a bit longer. And eventually it, it always t speaks to me and then I continue to draw. It's a conversation with the subject. It's not me sitting there trying to guess what a tree should look like, and it's not me just copying the, um, the physical attributes of a tree. And or originally, when I first started doing this, I was taking my first steps in the spirituality of art. And as I focused on it more and more, the the work of art started to talk to me as well as the subject. And with the work of art, originally, I have to confess, it was a battle of wills. I was hearing, but I wasn't listening. And the painting would say to me, oh, Richard, how about we put a little bit of this colour here? And I would say, no, nope, I'm the artist, I'm the boss, we're going to put this colour over here. And then through sheer force of will, I would force the painting into my preconceived idea of what the piece would be. It was really hard. It was really exhausting. At the end of the day, I would just collapse with the, um, the, the, the aggro of having this battle with the piece. And then luckily for me, the transcendental relationship with the work moved, evolved and evolved. And eventually, I'm a slow learner, eventually I realised that collaboration was a much better way of going. And I started discussing and collaborating with the work, and it talked to me more and more and more. And it became a dance in this beautiful golden light. And I got rid of all of the preconceptions of what the piece should be. And together we, made, we, we worked on it and we pushed it and it moved. Every now and again, we still disagree, there's no doubt. And in, but in that instance now, it's a negotiation. How can we get around this? So it's a collaborative approach. And in that collaborative approach, what is really important is that you just say, I have to stay true to myself. So I have to shut out the physical world, not think about how other people want me to draw a tree, not worry about whether people will think my tree is good or bad or indifferent, but go with the flow and go with the moment in my own expression. If I'm going to work on an abstract painting, 
an artist has to raise you all of the aesthetic and the spiritual up to its highest level. We put abstract at the top level of, of um, Reynolds' hierarchy. And at that level, you need to have your spiritual, your technical, your energetic levels all coming together in harmony and all focused in this dance with the piece and the subject. Art's a communication though. And as we said, there's no, there's a very big difference between an artist having that emotional, spiritual experience and an artist being able to communicate that experience. What helps me communicate that experience, even while I'm having it, is holding the intention in my head very, very clearly, whatever the intention of this particular piece is. And that becomes the rudder that guides the whole process. So what we've had a look at is the thought that not all art is equal, and Joshua Reynolds' hierarchy of art acknowledges that as an art, as an object of art, has more spiritual and intellectual content to it, it's harder and harder to do. We have looked at the thought that an artist having an experience or a person having a spiritual experience is very, very different to being able to communicate that experience. And the artist's journey is to bring those two experiences together in the act of creation. It's a collaboration, not a battle. It's a communication with the piece. It's a communication with your subject. It's a communication with the energies in the entire universe that come through while you're working. As an artist, if you're listening to this, what I'd like you to do is the next time you approach a work of art, reach out and ask it and try and connect with it and just see what happens. You might be really surprised. Enjoy.